there it is. We gotta say goodbye to it. It was a worthy iPhone for two and a half years, and it's gonna be turned into somebody else's phone or something. Cheers. This Galaxy Note 3 needs a charge. The battery is at zero percent. Look at that cool graphic. <laughs> Meg has COVID nineteen. She's been <coughs> staying. She's been staying at home. Look at that. What's that on Meg's wrist right there? Meg has a zirconia oxide band like this that matches mine on, on my Apple Watch. So we have Apple Watches with matching black and white ceramic bands from Amazon.com. Thanks, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, don't say his name. We don't like Jeff Bezos here because he's an arrogant, selfish billionaire, but he is finally giving money back to charity, so we'll give him that. Ooh. He's less bad than he used to be. Pays. He and many other billionaires don't crook. pay their fair share of taxes. Meg's crook. angry about that. So, this is Meg's iPhone 12 mini, and it's got a protective case. You can see that, like the iPhone 14, it has two cameras, though they're in line. And that's the True Tone LED setup. And this is a TPU case that shows off the kind of beautiful antique mint color of this phone. Um, this one, it has the face ID and the sensor bump up here, just like the iPhone 14. And look, she even puts me in, in her background. And, to show you where I put you first and everything. And um, it won't log in because it's face ID and I'm holding a phone in front of it to record. So you can see we have um, Dayquil. Now this is technically for my mom because it contains it. acetaminophen, which would goof up Meg's um, Dexcom sensor. You want to show them your Dexcom sensor? No. No, she doesn't want to show you her Dexcom sensor. And then we also have um, NyQuil, and that's also for my mom because it contains acetaminophen and doxylamine, succinate, and dextromethorphan, HBR, the, the cough suppressant. So this um, dextromethorphan inhibits the cough reflex Doxylamine succinate is an anti antihistamine. It, it's a histamine blocker. It says right there, right? And it tells you that in each 30 mils of these little plastic cups, like this, that's the, um, you can see the demarcation for 30 and 15 mils if you want to take a half dose, but it tells you that in every 30 mils you get 650 milligrams of acetaminophen or Tylenol, and that's a pain reliever that plugs into the cannabinoid receptors. And then 30 milligrams of dextromethorphan, also called dex by teenagers who abuse this stuff. And doxylamine succinate, which is the antihistamine, 12.5 milligrams. And it tells you its uses for the relief of common cold and flu suit, uh, symptoms like cough, bronchial irritation, sore throat, headache, minor fever, runny nose, and sneezing. And that's what Meg is suffering from. I think she's on about day seven or eight of the COVID infection. I had COVID um, back in early 2020 before it was officially announced. Early February. In early February. And I went to a medical clinic and they were paranoid and kicked me out and told me to go home and not go to well, work. They charged us money but didn't do a damn yeah. thing. And will you hand me my old phone? So I want to show you... This is, um, when you get an iPhone, you just take your old iPhone, log into it, and you set it next to your new one, and um, it transfers all your data. So it makes your new phone exactly like your old one. This is um, getfpv.com. is a place where- That's what doctors normally do, don't they? They charge you a lot of money for doing almost nothing. This is, this is kind of cool. So getfpv sells first person view drones where you wear a headset and then you fly the drone and you get to see the world like an insect. And I've got my COVID vaccine sticker right here. And I have patriotic stickers, the Wounded Warrior Project, and I support Wounded Warriors. And um, I like to thank a veteran. And I believe in duty, honor, courage, commitment, integrity, country, and service. Honor our heroes, woundedwarriorproject.org. I put those in here, you know, thank you for my freedom and the American flag shaped like America. Now this is pretty slick. I'm gonna do this one-handed, but if I pop this cover off here, go like this, you can actually see, I got this um, sticker that shows the inside 
design of the iPhone, including its battery, its chipset. This is the A13. The phone I'm shooting it on has the A15. The Taptic engine or vibration linear, linear motor vibration engine. Um, you see this is uh, probably um, an RF cage for the uh, transceiver set for cellular. And then you see different connectors here where it'll spit out um, connections to the screen and to the radios and antennas that are built into the border of the phone. This was the last phone. Uh, well, they have a third gen version. This is the second gen version that had the touch ID. So if I go like that, I can unlock my phone and you can see the different apps that I have there, right? I'm not gonna log into any of them or anything, but the touch ID is the, the device interface on here. And it has um, only a single camera up there in the corner, right? The camera is the big app on smartphones, which is why the new ones have big camera humps and more cameras. It's the popular app because it enables people to post stuff to social network platforms like YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> and that's why this is a YouTube video. This happens to be a very high performance. It's called an IQ3 and it's made by Anchor. And this is the PowerPort 3 Nano. And this little booger pumps out three amps at up to nine volts, right? Or five volts at three amps or nine volts at 2.22 amps. So if I'm not mistaken, I think that's around 20 watts. And it's the same size as the original Apple <laughs> brick. I don't have one new here, but this is the iPad brick. So this was um, by size comparison, if you, if you look at these, right? Now this is from back in 2010. It came with my iPad 2. And if we go to the specifications on here, I'm gonna set that down so we can get some clean text out of it. But if we look at this tech specs here, it's pumping out five volts at 2.1 amps or about 10 watts because voltage times amps is wattage. So Apple's standard little brick that's the size of this thing is 500 milliamps and it's very weak, where this pumps out multiple amps. So this is a powerful gallium nitride circuitry technology device. And Anchor has been perfecting these things for a while. So they have superlative energy efficiency so this little guy actually pumps out more power than this big guy, but it's also more than 10 years newer. So, you know, it's not surprising that we would, we would see something like that. Apple is known for making rounded rectangles, and you can tell that this phone is a rounded rectangle. Meg's phone is a rounded rectangle. And the, the phone I'm recording this on, the brand new iPhone 14, is a rounded rectangle. Well, I wanna show you something else. This is a Galaxy Note 3 that my friend Jay gave me that used to belong to his wife. And you can see that I'm listening to Deuter on here. If I turn it up, you can hear that, but I'm gonna pause it. And this is a Samsung Galaxy AMOLED screen. It's ultra power efficient. This device is quite old. It's a Note 3. Look at how quickly it goes to sleep. So it wants, and it wants to go to sleep quickly. And look at this weird port on here. This is possibly actually one of the weirdest charge ports ever developed. It's called USB type C or uh, USB micro type C or micro C. So it takes a standard micro USB and then an auxiliary. So the cable is extra wide, almost like the 20 pin adapter Apple was using. I happen to have one of those. Uh, here by comparison so you can see it's not quite as bad but um, it's in that territory this is the charging cable that I was using with this Apple adapter to charge my antique um, iPad 2 which still works perfectly now here's an here's an oddball one that's used with technical equipment. this is called mini mini USB 
And I, I used to call it the Princess Leia one because it has that kind of squared off design like the Star Wars universe. It's about 50 times stronger than micro USB. And I don't have any micro USB nearby, but I have a, a Apple Lightning connector like this. Oh no, um, this is micro USB. So you can see the micro USB is kind of a, a small, thin, fragile little duo. And if you compare the two side by side, you can tell that the mini USB is much more robust. It's just bigger and stronger, it's thicker, right, and stronger. And this micro USB, it was, it was the Android charging cable for eons before Type-C came out. I'm going to show you a Type-C connector because this is the trending. So here's the female Type-C port. There you go. And the male part that plugs into it is symmetrical, but it's kind of like an inside out version of Apple's lightning connector. Now Apple uses this Type-C on their current MacBook because Type-C cables can transfer up to 100 watts of power, up to 120 watts of power actually. And we see that this um, Type-C connector is for the newly improved MagSafe connector for my eighth generation Apple Watch. And it charges up to 50% faster than the classical USB-A version of, of this MagSafe connector. Now the classic USB was USB-A. Um, I'm almost 40 years old. This came out when I was in middle school or, or somewhere way back there in the late 90s uh, or maybe even the early 90s, but these USB-A were virtually ubiquitous. It stands for Universal Serial Bus. So it's a communication standard for plugging cabling into devices and computers. <coughs> and you see that even this micro USB connector has a USB-A right? Not just the mini cable. And this old Apple connector has a USB-A. USB-A, <coughs> here is the cable that I'm charging the iPhone with right now. I have a lightning to USB-A connector into the iPad charging brick. Is USB-A again. This is a very, I'm going to show you a female USB-A. So here's a, here's a female USB-A, and you can tell it's big and chunky, very strong, it's got a big metal grounding shield all around it. The, the tongue in the middle is thick with four pins. It's uh, only one way to plug in. And we see that I unplugged my iPhone here, and that's the, the male version of that same cable. All right, that's enough technical jaggle. I'm at 13 minutes, so this is one of the longer YouTube videos. Hope you learned something interesting. It's the first video I've shot on my new iPhone 14. And we're gonna go to the ultra wide mode here. That's Meg. This is the inside of our highly overpriced apartment. Well, it's not our furniture, so. It's not our furniture. This furniture belongs to my mom. This is the 2014 laptop that I'm still using. It's got a touch screen. And um, I use this power outlet down there and this one over here to charge my stuff. That's our trash. And our recycling bin. You know. And then here's Meg's vaporizer chamber. This keeps the air humid that she's breathing at night. And that's an insulin pen. Actually, this is kind of cool. So these pens, um, I, I haven't featured one specifically. This is called Novolog, a flex pen. And what this is, it's three mils, and there's a hundred units per mil. So there's 300 units of insulin. And the way this works is you pop the cap off like that, and you can see there's a borosilicate glass tube filled with insulin in there. And I don't wanna break her needle, so I'm just gonna stop there, but you dial up how many units you need back here, and then you puncture the needle into your body, and then you depress this orange button, and it delivers exactly as many units as you tell, but you have to leave the needle in for a few seconds to let all of the insulin transfer. And what we have here are some vitamins. This is a turmeric supreme, which is like a natural anti-inflammatory, and a pancreatine enzyme, which helps digest food. And these are guasoflafin um, pills known as Mucinex. Only your mom is taking. And the Mucinex is another cold medication. This is the solid oh, version. Need to know everything, 
And these are vitamin these are vitamin D and vitamin C that makes taking and she drinks water out of a canning jar like this and puts a, a lid on it to keep dust and funk out of it. And we can see Meg using her iPhone here like this. She uses it to check her glucose and do social media and all kinds of stuff because um, we're millennials, we're elder millennials. We, we were born in the early 80s. Make phone calls into text message. And she texts and make phone calls, right? And to practice Hebrew. And we practice Hebrew. And to listen to Christian music. And we Spotify and Pandora Christian music and sometimes even on YouTube. All right, friends, thanks for watching. Have a beautiful day. And I'm sorry to Meg for showing her in this kind of uh, shell-shocked COVID state but um, she'll feel better. Not sorry enough to not do it. And um, sh she'll feel better in the future. She's, she's quite sick still, but she's such a <coughs> warrior. She's such a warrior, she's gonna even go to work tomorrow <coughs> with the blessing of her employer. Because um, I don't know why, but that's how it goes. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.